Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this Unity video, we're going to be talking about testing for uh, Raycast collisions inside of Unity C Sharp scripting. So if you don't know what a Raycast is, it's where you take a point somewhere in your scene, and that can be a 2D point or a 3D point, basically. Uh, if it's 2D, you just ignore the Z, uh, and you would use Physics 2D rather than the Physics library. But you, anyway, you take a point, and you give it a direction. So for instance, it could be right in front of our character here, and it would be in the direction to the right. That would be one, uh, one for x and zero for y in terms of vector values. So it would be um, starting at this point, and you go in this direction um, for a certain length, which would basically be the distance. And if it comes into contact with anything that has a collider, uh, note the different uh, the uh, connection between colliders and collisions. Um, so if it comes into a collider, basically anything that has a box collider, uh, a box collider 2D attached to it specifically, because we're talking about 2D, then it's going to return a hit. So it's a raycast hit. In this case, a raycast hit 2D for 2D physics, and that hit um, object is going to contain basically the collider that it collided with, as well as some extra information. So uh, let's see, the rat swarm over here, I went ahead and added a box collider to it so that in this scene, it, these raycasts that we're going to be creating can actually um, collide with these. Now, if you think like a raycast, you could really think of it like shooting a laser beam. And if you were to create a laser beam gun, a uh, raycast would be a great way to see if it actually collides with something or if it doesn't. Um, if you're not going to have an actual physical uh, game object that's basically a sprite projectile, for instance. So you're thinking of it like a raycast, I, I mean a, an alien space gun, and it shoots a ray out, and if it hits something, something's going to happen to that. You don't have to do something with it, uh, but it will definitely let you know if something does hit that. Okay, so I hope that made some sense. Let's go ahead and hit play, and I'll, I'll show you kind of what my script does, and maybe that'll clear things up a little bit. So we have the previous scene with the falling, spawning rats on the left, and the animated rat that's just sitting there on the right. Um, the fire button in Unity, uh, Fire 1 defaults to control, and that's what I set the script up to, uh, to use as creating a raycast. So when I hit control, it's going to shoot a raycast out in the direction that the character is facing. So if I shoot to the left, it doesn't hit anything. But if I shoot to the left at the uh, moment in time when that rat enemy falls, it collides because this raycast goes straight to the left. And if it's there at the time, it gives you that uh, return that it actually hit the collidable object. And then you can do things with it like delete the object, deal damage to the object, whatever you're looking for. So we also have this guy over here to the right. If I hit control, um, should always hit it. Okay, it didn't read my input there for some reason. Uh, but yeah, you can see it colliding with rat swarm zero. So that's great. Uh, that's basically what we want. Um, it's also possible to show raycasts through debug.drawray. Um, and then I think you have to like uh, set a debug point or something like that in order to actually see it in the scene view. But it, it is possible to see the, uh, the rays in the scene while you're debugging. Um, now you'll, you'll know, of course, that these rays are invisible because we're just trying to calculate if something's in the way between this vector point and this vector um, out a certain distance. That's all we're doing. Uh, the laser beams, the graphics, that's all extra stuff you have to add in on top of that. And you can use these values in um, basically playing around with that later. But for now, let's just jump right into the script. So back in player controller, and uh, at a certain point, it might make sense to split some of this stuff up into multiple files so that player controller doesn't get too out of hand. Um, but we've added a couple more things here. So, uh, first off, origin offset. Um, so, a, a raycast starts from basically the center of your game object by default, and a raycast can collide with the, uh, the game object that it's basically 
creating the ray cast from in a sense. It doesn't really create the ray from the game object, but you can use the game object's position for the starting point of the ray cast. Anyway, if that game object has a box collider on it, then what will likely happen without any kind of offset or a layer mask is that the ray will collide with your game object first. So it would say like, Raycast has hit uh, Jeffrey the Dude, or whatever your player controller is. So note that there's a few ways to get around that. Um, the one I'm doing right here is having an orange and an offset. So whichever direction it's facing, it, the Raycast will start 0 0.5 units off offset from the center point of that character. Uh, there's actually a better way to do that, I, I would say, and that's layer masks, where uh, you set up a layer mask, and it can only the Raycast can only collide with characters on that layer. So you might have an enemy's layer, and that would be perfect. Okay, uh, let's go down here. So, new method, check raycast. Uh, pretty straightforward. It raycasts out from the player, roughly. Uh, the position of the player, really. And returns the target's hit. So it's got a base direction. And uh, then you apply the offset. If the direction is to the right, basically a positive x value, then the offset will also be positive. Otherwise, you take the offset and you make it negative so that um, you're basically putting it to the left of the player rather than to the right again. And uh, let's see. So the starting position, basically a calculation combining those two vectors. Uh, do you have a debug draw ray there? And uh, maybe if we debug here in a second, we'll be able to get the rays to draw. And... What happens finally is that it returns a raycast hit 2D, and that's what the raycast method re returns, a raycast hit 2D. You'll note I'm using the physics 2D library because this is a 2D game. There's also the physics library, which is more or less the same thing, but in 3D, basically just adding that z-axis on. So we have the starting position, which is the origin point of the ray. We give it a direction, which we passed in before this method. And then finally, uh, a ray cast distance. So how far can the ray go before it stops looking to collide with something? Um, that's not required. I'm not actually sure how far ray goes with it when you don't specify it. Um, and then you could add one more thing, which would be a layer mask. So if we go here, uh, the layer mask is basically just an int representation of your layers in the game. So if we go to project settings, layers, as we looked a bit in the previous video, if you want to target only objects that are on layer 9, then basically what you need to go here is going to be an int value of 9. Now, probably better to set a constant variable, um, both for naming purposes and so that no matter where you do the raycast, it's always going to be using that layer. Um, but yeah, that, if you wanted to do the layer mask alternative, that would be what you're looking for. So, uh, where's this method actually being called? Well, inside of Raycast Check Update, you'll notice I moved all of the fixed update stuff before the movement and the animation into one method down here, because uh, we don't want that method to grow out of control. So, let's see here. Raycast Check Update. So, on update, it's going to check to see if it should do a raycast. If it does do a raycast, it returns true. Otherwise, it returns false. Um, now, the direction by default is going to be 1. That means straight to the right inside of uh, 2D coordinates. And that will be set to negative if, uh, basically, this might not be the best way to check it, but I was getting the float value out of the animator. Uh, because that determines what direction the character is facing, so that kind of determines what direction the character should be shooting from. Might not be the ideal way to get that value, but that's one way to do it. Uh, so anyway, if it's if the character is facing left, it reverses the direction. Simple enough, right? Um, and then it goes ahead and does the check ray cast. You get the hit. If it collided with anything, basically if the hit.collider is not null, then it logs that to the console. Great. And then uh, what you could do after that is um, do things like apply damage to the collider or something like that. Uh, so in my game Heart Battle, what I did was uh, I would actually make anything that it was going to collide with that should take damage. Um, I made it 
implement a interface. I called it I damageable, and that just meant that anything that is I damageable has a method for applying damage. Uh, so in that way, basically whatever kind of object it is, as long as it can take damage and it collides with your projectile or whatever, then you apply the damage. Okay, so uh, yeah, moving on from that, let's just go ahead and show it one more time and then we'll see if I can get the uh, debug rays to go. So it's looking to the right, it's going to start about here, collide with that, and if I time it right, then the ray will actually hit the, um, the rat that's falling over there. So let's apply the debugger and uh, just give it one final check, because that... That would be pretty cool if we can get it to work. Uh, okay, so debug draw ray. So it turns out to get the rays to draw relatively uh, correctly, I needed to do one thing, or, well, a couple things actually. Uh, first, the second variable should be the location where the ray ends. So in this case, it was hit dot point taken out of the ray cast hit. Uh, I think before I had the direction of the raycast, but it's actually looking for a world uh, coordinates position. And then uh, I added a fourth parameter, which was the, uh, the duration over here. So it's set to three seconds so that we can see it in the scene view for at least three seconds after it's done. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it there. So I'll go ahead and show you uh, how a debugged raycast looks like. So I'll hit um, basically control, and it will, well, I can take that out right now, because that's actually inaccurate. But it hits the collidable object, and then we go into the scene view, and you can see the raycast. Uh, now note that I didn't actually uh, offset the raycast center point um, from the character, like the real raycast is doing. But this actually shows you how, when you raycast from a character's transform, um, it's inside the character, so it can hit the box collider, which is going to be somewhere over here. So yeah, just be careful with that. Um, that pretty much sums up the basics of using array casts inside of 2D Unity. So I hope this helps you out while you're making a good game. I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next new Unity video.